how much you make in a day. Welcome to comments. You know what the problem with all the comments are? They're too f***ing nice. Give me some bad comments. Give me this. Tell me, you know? Tell me. Don't be afraid. Oh, Ben, I love this. I like, blah, 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 blah. I like the guy's comments. They're great. I appreciate it. But there's got to be somebody out there with some hate and some frustrations and just want to say, you rich, bad pig. I hate you. And maybe that'll make them motivated to get off their ass and make some money. Some people are motivated by pleasantness. Some people are motivated by rawr! I'm a little of both. Ben, I'll put a hundred grand into escrow if you can get a six pack abs, not beer, by March, 2022, you can have it or donate it to a charity of your choice. He wants me to get a six pack. I'd be lucky if I could get one fucking can out of this. Is he crazy? Sorry, Charlie, for a hundred grand? No, but make it a million and I'll try. What age did you get into real estate? Well, that depends on what you mean. I mean, actually hustling real estate? I actually started, I kid you not, at around 14, my cousin was remodeling stuff with my brother and they took me to work and handed me a freaking sledgehammer and said, tear out these goddamn walls. And the walls were like a hundred years old. They were made out, it wasn't even sheetrock, it was lap and plaster and the studs were like the petrified forest and it had me busting down walls in big old Victorian or whatever houses in Westchester. Then I went in the army at the age of 17 and in the army in Germany, I made friends with this guy that knew there wasn't enough space on the uh, military base to rent all the soldiers. So we had a housing assistance office. I'd hang around the housing assistance office, looking for guys coming over to looking for apartments for rent outside of the military base. I'd get them, I'd bring them to the guy that had the apartments, the German guy, He'd rent them something, you know, from a German. He'd make a fee from the guy that owned the property. He'd make a fee from the soldier. And he gave me a big, nice kickback. So I did that a couple of times a week at least. So I made extra money while I was in the army, hustling apartments to GIs in Germany. Then I didn't get back into real estate until the army sent me to California. Then I went back to the bottom, picking up garbage for Mark Wilton. That's how I got into real estate. 14, 17, and 21. And I'm here still. I'm still standing. Well, not really, I'm sitting. How did you make your first 50K USD? The first 50K I made, it was exactly 50K. Exactly, the first 50K I made was me and my partner, Mark, who used to be my boss, we did a very first deal. It was only four apartments. He gave me the money to buy it. He gave me the money to fix it up. I found it, I fixed it, I rented it, we refinanced it, and we made $100,000 on the refi. He got 50 and I got 50. Good deal for him, but it was a good deal for me because it was the first 50K I ever made. And what did I do with the 50K? I was supposed to give it to him to go into the next deal. And I tried, but he didn't want to buy the building that Carla lived in. He didn't like it. Nobody liked it. I was the only person in the entire city of Oakland that had the balls to buy that building. 7867 Bancroft Avenue back in the 1990s. It was a war zone and nobody wanted to touch it with a 10 foot pole. The city boarded the building up. There were flowers all in front of the place and all the murders that took place there. And here's this poor little Mexican family living upstairs, hiding under the bed while the bullets were flying every night. So. I took the 50 grand and I made a deal with the guy who owned the paper on that building. He foreclosed on the old lady who owned it. She was wacko. I should have gave that money to Mark, but I said, well, I begged Mark to do the deal with me. Luckily, after I gave the guy my 50K, he held paper on the rest of it and gave me like a year to turn the place around. I went back to Mark. I said, Mark, check it out now. I cleaned out all the garbage out of it. He saw it was a solid building and I started doing certain things, techniques I had to curb away the crime activity on that little block. Okay. And he came back, he looked at it, he says, fine, let's do it. So luckily he came in because I didn't have the money to fix it up. I only had the 50K to buy the place. So luckily he agreed and then we did the other deal and he carried me on that one. So it all worked out. That was my first 50K. I bought Carla with it. I'm paying on that, on that Carla deal. I'm going to be paying for the rest of my life. 
but it's got its benefits. Ben, it fits. If it fits, Ben, it's a benefit. Carla's a benefit. Let's see Carla drunk again. So funny with her. You see it. I don't want to see it. I see it plenty. It might be funny, but you know, the next day I got bruises, baby, bruises. What is the craziest bet you ever made? I only bet when I know I can win. The craziest bet I ever made, okay. I was invited to the owner's box at the horse race track. And I didn't want to look like a schmuck never winning because I never won in that stuff. I mean, you can, but it's very hard. Who the hell knows which horse out of 14 is going to win? I was invited there. I had to get all dressed up, go to the owner's box with a bunch of big shots. They're all betting. People are winning and all that shit. So I said, you know what? I got to walk up to that winner's table no matter what and look like a winner today in front of all these big shots. So what did I do? I bet on every horse. <laughs> I think I lost like a hundred bucks by doing that because the winner didn't pay enough for the losses. But I looked like a winner. Nobody knew that I bet on every horse. <laughs> I just, oh, winner, winner. They didn't know I had 10 of them losing tickets to go with it. But I won and I looked like a winner. Next, what was the moment when you knew you had made it? And what did that mean to you? It felt damn good when I was in my 30s and I accomplished a goal and maybe hit the million mark or bought that Ferrari or that nice house, I felt like I made it. When I was 35 and I hit that five million mark and the bigger house and the Rolls Royce, I felt like I made it. So you keep making it in life. Uh, first time was when I had the money to buy the Ferrari and I shouldn't have bought it. That was a big mistake. But I felt like, yeah, 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 big shot. I go out, give me a Ferrari, yeah. My fat ass couldn't even fit in the goddamn thing. I had to take the freaking roof off. It was one of those cheapos, 308 GTSI. How do you come up with such great comebacks when someone says something smart ass to you? Have you always been a natural in front of camera? Listen, the only way to survive when I was a kid, especially in my family, my family showed no love, baby, no love. You got a kick in the ass. And when you're down, they kick you with the other foot. My whole family was based on criticism, constant. If you saw anything where you could stick a knife into each other, they did it to me. So what did I do? I stuck it back. That's the way I was raised. Always having to defend yourself and stick it to somebody else before they stick it to you. So basically, yeah, because, you know, I got picked on constantly. You know, everybody in the family, that's the way they didn't show affection. My mother's never used the words, I love you, forget it, okay? And if she tried to put her hands on me and hug me, I said, get the hell away from me, all right? That's the way we grew up, dysfunctional. But I knew it was dysfunctional. So when I raised my own family, I didn't do that. I'm very nice and loving to my children, ain't I? When do you think Vincent will be worth a raise? Vincent's been worth a raise, but the problem is, let him wait. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Listen, my kids, you know, as we grow, they grow. Okay, we all grow. I wish Ben would get on Joe Rogaine with Joey Diaz as well, would be a historical absolute legend. They don't want me. Listen, if you want me to be on Joe Rogan or Joey Diaz, you guys contact them and you tell them, and if they call me to be on, then I'll be on. I'm confused. If Ben bought the yacht, why is the captain in charge of everything? Throwing a bit of parts dropped in the water, that's Ben's. The captain is in charge. You wanna run a hundred, almost a hundred foot machine that weighs 200,000 pounds? All right, and not hit nothing and not fuck up the boat. The captain is in charge, okay? And if he's concerned about dropping parts, hell yeah, he needs parts to run and operate the boat, okay? I kissed the captain's ass, it's a fact. Why? Because I need him. Is he the only captain in the world? No, but this one I got is an expert. I think his license says that he's responsible for everything. Anything happens to Ben on the boat. You know who they'll sue first before they sue me? The captain. Ben, matzo ball soup 
or a pastrami sandwich? Why would I choose? Why not have both? If I go somewhere and they're serving matzo ball soup and pastrami sandwiches, I'd be a freaking idiot not to eat them both. It's called soup in a sandwich. And if you're on a diet, have soup in half a sandwich. It's on a special for $2 less. How much you make in a day? I don't know. You know, I don't do it by the day. I do it by the year. And I monitor it monthly. By the day, who the hell knows? I know one goddamn thing. If you put a million bucks into a muni bond fund that's paying you five plus percent, that's 50 grand a year, tax free. And you get about four grand monthly. I know that much, but otherwise everything's by the year. Hotels are up and down. You make big money one month, you don't make shit the next month. During COVID, you don't make shit. And now it's slowly trying to creep up and then we get knocked down again. Holy shit, the cruise ships are parked everywhere. They ain't nothing moving down in South Florida. Day, I ain't been a day laborer since I was waiting to go to the army at 17. Next. I stayed in Vincent's hotel for three and a half months recently in Fort Lauderdale and was there most of the day and only saw him one time. Talked to him, great guy, but Ben Sr. may have a point pertaining to the upkeep of this property. Well, number one, I want to thank you. If you actually, you've stayed here for three and a half months, it's a long time, and I do appreciate that. I'm sure if there was a problem, I know about it. And you don't see where people are at. Nobody ever sees me anywhere, but I'm working, ain't I? All right, you gotta understand the business. Being there means you're not working. When you're not there, that's when you're in the back room getting shit done. So what were you doing for the three and a half months you were staying there? I hope you weren't using my uh, room as a place of business. John Lesniak. This guy is the most annoying person on YouTube. He is a joke. That's right, I'm a joke. Now you get it, you idiot. And I wonder how annoying you are because if you're only person that can call me annoying is somebody who is annoying because they know what annoying is really like. Okay, yes, I'm annoying, and yes, I'm a joke. So you're absolutely right. Thank you. That's for more aggressive comments. We need more aggressive comments. Let's get down to it. Come on, give us some good stuff. Please, leave comments. I will respond. I will reply if they're good. Give me something I can sink my teeth into. And hit the like button. I, I, I. Like, dislike, like, dislike. Do I do I know I'm not begging for you or follow what? What else you want me to do? You want me to beg? You want me to get on my fucking hands and knees and beg so you can get some fucking money, Rafal? Big this. But uh <laughs> subscribe. Adios, amigos.